Hey, you crazy kids, and welcome to another episode of How to Voice It, starring me. But not just me this time, I have received a lot of requests for a particular voice, and as we all know, I am not a professional in any case, and I decided that I could use some help. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my very special guest, Dad! Hey, Daniel. Oh. Here, everyone's clapping for you right oh, now. That's awesome. That's it's awesome. great. So much yeah. support. This is my dad. He was half responsible for my birth. And growing up, he was actually, believe it or not, one of the voices of my childhood. He's been one of my role models, and he was kind of one of the first people to introduce me to funny voices, to cartoon voices. One voice in particular is what we're going to focus on today, and that is the Donald Duck voice. And if you can believe it, my dad is very well versed in his Donald Duck voice. We are going to give you some tips to try to help you learn this very unique voice. It's not your typical voice where you're using your vocal cords. It actually requires mostly just an expulsion of air out of your mouth. So the first step is to learn the sound. For me, and it works a little bit different for everybody, I put my tongue up against the inside of my teeth on my uppers. Your upper teeth. Upper teeth, yes. And I put the, the pressure of my tongue against there. So if you've got your teeth, your tongue up against your teeth there, and you just kind of blow some air through there, just kind of force it through that side of your mouth. Isolate it in that one particular area where your tongue and teeth are, and just push it out. You're gonna get this sound. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the basis for the voice. You're going to find that if you want that higher register, you're going to put a little more pressure at the top end. If I can get up there, I'll do it. But <laughs> So you kind of like <laughs> do you like a dying dying animal almost, but um, <laughs> you kind of well, that's what he sounds like all the time. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you kind of tighten your tongue, you'd say. I think you put probably. you put a little more pressure there. I guess there's just a little more effort to run that sound through the teeth and mm -hmm. the tongue there. You can also go the other way too. You can go lower register where you're dropping that pressure and your voice and the sound comes out something more like, Hello, Daniel. How are you doing today? <laughs> just like your normal voice, you can run a register. It takes some practice. Since this is just you blowing air out of your mouth, be careful not to make yourself too lightheaded. Don't overdo it. You don't want to pass out. I have gotten very lightheaded a lot of times. That tendency happens when you're you're saying sentences and you're you're trying to finish the sentence without a breath and that this this is more challenging. You can't it's harder to take in and breathe normally when you're doing this voice. So mm -hmm. thus, yeah, thus the, the lightheadedness or red head or the you know redheadedness or whatever. Red redheaded redheadedness, yeah well not, no, not the hair <laughs> but the yeah. If you're trying to do something like a really long sentence, take breaths where you can in that sentence and also be sure to take deep breaths when you start out too. Uh, but again, don't push yourself. You develop the sound first. I think that's the most important part. Donald Duck is known for his temper tantrums and really it's just him sort of overemphasizing the sound, this sound, but all over the place. So you're shaking your head. Why don't we just go ahead and do that now just to demonstrate what a temper tantrum sounds like, I guess, uh, from Donald Duck. One, two, three. <laughs> It sounds pretty much like Your that. Your hair is all loud. Yeah, no, I know. I know. <laughs> that is the first step in learning the voice. And if you get anything out of this video, the temper tantrum is the biggest piece. One of the funner things to do, and if you want to entertain little kids, is learn how to do the sneeze. Uh, and, and I entertained these guys when they were kids. And it's just like saying the word at you, but you're doing it with that duck voice. And I always found that doing a little intro to it, drawing it out, making it a little more dramatic. Building it up. Building yeah. it up, yeah. <laughs> the, the kids always enjoy that. So it's kind of like that, uh, Kind of goes like this. <laughs> so a little bit of uh, head shake there at the end, and yeah. not at all helps. The reality is, is you probably understand about half of what Donald Duck says, even in the, even in, even in the cartoons, and even if he's trying to say stuff, it it's really just depends on the context of the scene or you know what Donald Duck is doing. Keep in mind that how I mentioned that this voice doesn't use the vocal cords. It's just an expulsion of air. Anybody can learn this. If you're thinking that, oh, I can't do this because it's easier for for these people or these people with these certain ranges, you don't really need to have a certain range to do this voice. You can just, so long as you have a tongue and a mouth and teeth and you can breathe, 
you should be able to learn this voice with enough practice. The next step would be forming the words. But before you really form the words, I guess the, the letters would be the, the starting point, the base for eventually forming the words. It's just like learning any language. You, you start with the basics and you work your way up to the more complicated. So as you work your way through the alphabet, I would recommend recording yourself and listening to see how those words, those sounds come out of you and then just working to make those as clear as possible. But you're going to see as we go through that there are some letters, whether they're consonants or vowels or combinations thereof, that are just difficult and hard to make clear. Do you want to do it together? Ah, uh, no, let's take it south. I'll do the first okay. part, you do the separate part. A, B, C, D, A, F, G, H, I, J, J. <laughs> you could hear at the very end that Z sounds almost like a G. So it's just important to overemphasize the shape of your mouth. So like an E would be a wide mouth. You're trying to form that. So an O would be or a U would be. It's just like how babies learn from listening and mimicking people's mouth movements. Look in a mirror, see how you would form a word with your normal voice. Try to replicate that while also doing sort of the, the tongue and teeth formation with the Donald Duck voice. You just have to keep working at that. Uh, and you have to realize that your face has to work over time to make <laughs> this voice work. It does make, it does work your facial muscles. It's almost like your face is taking over yeah. some of that duty trying to make, you know, this sound as close to the letter or word as, as mm -hmm. uh, we would normally expect. I don't know if you noticed it, but at the end, when you did the alphabet at the end, you were out of breath. You expelled breath. You yeah. were out of breath by the time you hit the end of the I alphabet. Was, yeah. So it goes to what you said earlier about and practice I, breathing. Yeah. One trick that you can do to practice different consonant sounds and different vowel sounds is to do tongue twisters. And it can be a little tricky, obviously, because you're doing the same sound over and over again. But at the same time, I really think that it helps you just continue to practice similar sounds. So when you say, she sells seashells by the seashore, it would sound like you're basically just practicing that same sh and s sound over and over again that's a good way to practice your breathing too because tongue twisters are really short practice different words practice weird words practice words that you say all the time string sentences together unfortunately we can't exactly tell you how to move forward with this. This is something I think that you just kind of have to take what we can give you and run with it. It's really just a matter of continuing to practice it. I think this voice more than most voices just requires you to keep doing it. It takes a while to master and if you're ever feeling bad about your seeming inability to, to do it well, watch the cartoon. You'll realize that even those paid professionals, you couldn't make out all the words that were being said and so it, just watch that and you'll see that it's a tough voice it to uh, mimic so and the voice actors all of them over the years they've all sounded slightly different from each other you just have fun with it i think yeah. that's that's the main thing is uh, it's, it's nothing to give yourself a headache about which no. you can do if you do it long <laughs> enough give yourself a headache and, and everybody else a headache. And everybody else that has to listen to it for an extended period of time so don't have food in your mouth uh, while you're practicing because oh, you, yeah. you'll just spit food all the crumbs <laughs> all over the place so you don't want anybody too close to you when you're practicing even without food uh, there's a lot of spittle involved a lot so of you know, a lot of, it's just one of those um, one of those voices that, that uh, causes you to do that so keep people at a distance no drinking or driving while ducking or <laughs> that's a new PSA I've never heard yeah, of yeah I know I didn't want to hear it again, <laughs> Okay, so to wrap up, step one would be putting your tongue in the top corner of your mouth, whether it's the left or the right, and just applying different amounts of pressure in order to get those different pitches, making the sound. So the <coughs> sort of playing around with that, trying out the temper tantrum. The next step would be the alphabet. Yeah, you move from there and just work through that. And again, I would just recommend recording your voice mm -hmm. as you go through that. Try single syllable words, but make sure that you use words that, that range the alphabet. Just get practice there. Try tongue twisters for certain vowel sounds or consonant sounds that you have a lot of trouble with. Look in the mirror and see how you're forming words with your own speaking voice and your mouth 
and try to apply that with the Donald Duck voice. It does become easier. Your words start taking better shape. It's like a baby learning a new language. Have conversations with yourself. I might sound crazy to people trying to talk to myself in different voices in the car. It does really help quite a bit. Watch old Donald Duck videos. Yeah, do you'll... research. Yeah, do research. Do your homework. <laughs> uh, and it'll pay off in the long run for you. Definitely. I want to thank my dad for being able to join me for this video. I'm glad he was willing to, to step in front of the camera officially for the first time on my channel. Thanks being for having the, me. Yeah. Thank you for being the voice of my childhood and being one of those inspirations for getting into all of this and for being so supportive and encouraging. As you I are welcome. You are welcome. And as always, Thank you for watching this episode of How to Voice It. See you next time. <laughs> I'm Philly Obata. What was that? Obata. Obather? Obather. Obrother? Obather. Obrother. Obrother. I'm Philly. I shoot. See ya.